When Gravity Falls burst onto the animation scene in 2012, we couldn't get enough of Dipper Pines and his twin sister Mabel. So how could 107 piddly little facts ever be enough for this beloved but all too brief animated adventure? It couldn't! That's why we've compiled 107 more facts you should know about Gravity Falls. Think you know everything there is to know about the Pines twins, Grunkle Stan, and the rest of the Gravity Falls universe? Inconceivable! So sit back, grab some snacks, and get ready to get your learn on. Just a warning, some of these facts could be a little spoilery, so proceed at your own risk. Number one. When asked for an alternate title for the show, creator Alex Hirsch answered, Big Trouble in Little Oregon. Number two. For the test short, Disney commissioned Canada animation studio House of Cool Incorporated to complete the animation. The studio used Adobe Flash, which gave it a more static and limited feel. Reminiscent of hand-drawn animation like DuckTales and The Simpsons. Number three. According to storyboard artist Matt Braley, final animation was created overseas at an animation studio in Korea. Number four. Hirsch didn't initially intend to voice the characters on the show. When it finally came down to casting the characters, others, including himself, felt that he was perfect for the characters of Grunkle Stan and Seuss Ramirez. Number five. Hirsch has commented that the large number of fans who correctly guessed the existence of Stan's twin brother contributed to the timing of Ford's entrance. Number six. Ford's existence was planned from the very beginning of the series, and many clues have been sprinkled throughout the series. One example, Stan's license having the wrong name as early as episode two. Number seven. This twin brother device wouldn't have gone over very well with the cast of the show itself, who become outraged when a similar unveiling occurs in their favorite show, Detective. Number eight. Grunkle Stan's actual name is Stanley. He stole his brother Stanford's identity when Stanford got sucked into the interdimensional portal during a fight. Number nine. While eating snacks one night, Stan Pines accidentally broke his brother's science fair experiment that would guarantee him a fantastic education. This ruined Ford's chances of getting into West Coast tech. Instead, he went to a community college called Back Up Some More. University. Number 10. Stan's brother Ford came to Gravity Falls to study anomalies, claiming he found more anomalies existed in this area than anywhere else in the states. Number 11. Ford fell into the portal somewhere in the mid to late 80s, so he existed in another dimension for about 30 years. Number 12. Fiddle Ford McGucket would have been better off had he stayed in his garage in Palo Alto and kept working on personal computers. This is a nod to Steve Jobs who invented Apple computers in, you guessed it, a garage in Palo Alto. Number 13. Ford summoned Bill when he hit a roadblock with his research. Bill tricked him into trusting him as a friend and gave him the knowledge needed to build the portal to bridge his nightmare realm with our world. Number 14. Ford's assistant, Fiddle Ford, is none other than crazy old man McGucket. Number 15. When Fiddle Ford dipped into the portal, he saw, quote, the kinds of places where Bill Cipher likes to hang out, and his mind was permanently damaged. Number 16. To try to rid himself of the horrifying visions, McGucket started the Blind Eye Society, invented the memory erasing gun to help himself and others forget the unwanted memories. And and yes, there's a direct correlation between that device and McGucket losing his mind. Number 17. Want to defend your home from Bill Cipher? You'll need three moonstones, mercury, and a lock of unicorn hair. And we haven't seen Bill go inside the mystery shack yet, so it might have actually worked. Number 18. Ford is played by J.K. Simmons. In case you're not aware, he got a fair amount of attention this year for winning this little thing called an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in Whiplash. Good thing Dipper and Mabel aren't looking for a jazz teacher. Number 19. Some characters, such as Dipper, Mabel, and Candy, only have four fingers, whereas others, like Grunkle Stan, Seuss, Grenda, and Wendy, have five. Number 20. Among the new writers of season two is Josh Weinstein, who is perhaps most famous for being the showrunner on The Simpsons for the last two classic era seasons. Number 21. At the age of 15, Hirsch appeared on David Letterman doing bird calls. Number 22. On Mabel's good deeds list, you can see her feats included sponsoring a clown, taking out the trash, and abolishing the electoral college. Number 23. Gravity Falls got political in the episode The Stanchurian Candidate. There was the Amera Freedoms and Eagle Kissing. And the one-off campaign cry of Yes We Stan is an obvious homage to Obama's iconic 2010 campaign. Number 24. Ford implies he used the mind control tie in the 80s to control Ronald Reagan. Number 25. Some of Ford's crimes include snack evasion, pickpocketing, woodpecker baiting, impersonating a dentist, general indecency, golf cart theft, bingo fraud, telling jokes that go on and on, and pug trap. Number 26. Jason Ritter, the voice of Dipper, played Jeb Bush in a 2008 biopic about George W. Bush. Number 27. Ritter is often kept in the dark about the show's secrets. Early on, Hirsch realized that Ritter was a bit of a blabbermouth and has since deliberately kept him out of the loop about true happenings in Gravity Falls. 
Number 28. If Mabel's voice sounds familiar to you, there could be any number of reasons for that. Kirsten Shaw is also Louise Belcher on Bob's Burgers, Sarah Lynn on BoJack Horseman, and Jake Jr. on Adventure Time, to name a few. Number 29. Kirsten Shaw isn't the only borrowed voice from Adventure Time. Nikki Yang, who voices BMO, does the voice for Candy Shu, and John DiMaggio, who plays Jake, does the voice of Manly Dan. Number 30. Unsurprisingly, Hirsch has been obsessed with codes and conspiracies since he was a child. He says he recorded TV commercials on Windows 9 and would reverse them to see if he was being subliminally influenced to watch Pokemon by Japanese spies. Number 31. Upon Mayor Bafumlefumet's death, we learned that he was raised by bears and may have started World War I. Number 32. You will never ever see an alien on Gravity Falls. Even though a UFO has appeared in the series, Hirsch has a distaste for showing actual aliens. Number 33. Ironically enough, aliens abound on a show in the Gravity Falls universe. Hirsch recently commented that the series exists in the same universe as Adult Swim's Rick and Morty. Number 34. For the eagle-eyed viewer in the Rick and Morty episode Close Encounters of the Rick Kind, a Mystery Shack mug comes flying out of the portal. Number 35. You can also see a visual of Bill Cipher on a computer screen in the couple's therapy clinic in the episode Big Trouble and Little Sanchez. Number 36. Hirsch and Roiland have also given each other cameos on their respective shows. Hirsch plays Toby Matthews on the episode Big Trouble and Little Sanchez, and Roiland has a recurring role in Gravity Falls as Blendon Blandon. Number 37. Another phenomenon you will never see on Gravity Falls is a wish-based story. Hirsch dismisses it as, quote, a kid's show cliche. Number 38. If you thought the discount auto warrior were an homage to Mad Max, you're absolutely right. Number 39. One episode of Gravity Falls takes over a year to produce. Six months for boards, two months for animatics, six months for animation, and two months for retakes. And that doesn't even include writing the episodes. Number 40. Because Gravity Falls is a script-driven show, most of the writing is done by the writers, as opposed to the show like Adventure Time, which is storyboard-driven. Number 41. The writer's room has two sides of cards on the wall, one with potential character conflicts, crises, life issues, etc., and other others with potential monsters in Magic Fair. The writing process largely involves mixing and matching these two kinds of problems and figuring out which can thematically complement each other. Number 42. Creating the backgrounds on Gravity Falls is a three-step process. First, a rough sketch is sent in for approval, then the backgrounds are inked in by hand. Finally, they're sent off to the painters. So basically, everything about the show is really, really intricate. Hey everyone, we're taking a quick break from Gravity Falls Facts to let you know that we also have a movies and TV channel now. It's called Cinematica, and this month is Star Wars Month, so if you're a big fan of movies and TV or Star Wars, you should totally check it out. And with that, back to the facts. Number 43. Despite the numerous references to David Lynch's Twin Peaks throughout the series, Hirsch did not actually see Twin Peaks until he had already sold Gravity Falls. A much more direct influence on Gravity Falls was the short-lived 90s kids show Eerie Indiana. Hirsch has said that it's, quote, unambiguously a ripoff. Number 44. Artist Bridget Barriger, who went to Cal Arts with Hirsch, was asked to do the very first character studies for Gravity Falls. Quote, Dipper is based on Alex as a kid, and he should also have a hat. Mabel wears hideous sweaters and is Alex's foil. Hirsch's only note for Wendy was, maybe she's tall? I don't know. Number 45. Joe Pitt, who also worked on character design for the show, shared another early sketch of Dipper looking especially scrawny and scratchier looking pine. Number 46. The costume worn by Dipper in The Inconvenience Scene came from the childhood of one of the writers. Apparently, when his parents would leave, his sister would make him wear a lamb costume and prance around. Number 47. Bill Cipher is Hirsch's favorite character. Apparently, the character was created early on in the development of the show. Number 48. When Hirsch was thinking about the design for Bill Cipher, it struck him as hilarious to take the most ominous Illuminati-looking symbol and slap Mr. Peanut arms and legs on him and throw him into the mix. Number 49. Stan's first foray in a conman ship with Sham Total and his memorable tagline of, it's a total sham, is an obvious parody of Sham Wow, which is not as blatant about its fraud and admittedly did not work by smearing everything with paint. Number 50. Gravity Falls is in roadkill country. Number 51. Hirsch has stated that giving Dipper and Mabel's parents on-screen personas would, quote, rob the show of its entire being. Number 52. Robbie Valentine's band is Robbie V and the Tombstones. We've seen some posters of Robbie wearing eye makeup and peeking from a tombstone with the text, you're dead, which looks promising. Number 50. 
53. The episode Blendon's Game was originally going to end with Dipper and Mabel using their time wish to bring Seuss's son from the future to meet Seuss and assure him he's going to be an amazing father. Number 54. Shmabullock's family has a continuous presence in Gravity Falls. Shmabullock Sr. is studied by Ford when he first arrives in Gravity Falls. Number 55. Hirsch only played Dungeons and Dragons once with Pendleton Ward from Adventure Time and Pat McHale over the garden wall. That didn't stop him from having an entire episode based around a game called Dungeons, Dungeons, and More Dungeons. Number 56. Hirsch built a bar in the Disney television offices. He calls the bar Grunkle Stan's Bar. Number 57. One of the fast food establishments in Gravity Falls is Yumberjacks, where Seuss can be seen ordering a kid's meal. Number 58. The voice of the wizard Probabilitor was none other than Weird Al Yankovic, a childhood hero of Hirsch's, which of course prompted Hirsch to ask Weird Al to help create this ridiculous vine. Number 59. After all that debate amongst fans, it turns out that Stan's tattoo is a burn he incurred during his fight with Ford immediately before his brother's disappearance. Number 60. The supervising producer for Gravity Falls is Rob Renzetti, who was also the creator of My Life as a Teenage Robot. Number 61. Candy is fluent in Korean, which makes sense since Nikki Yang also voices Lady Rainicorn in Adventure Time, a character that literally only speaks in Korean. Number 62. One of the primary directors of Season 1, Aaron Springer, was also also a writer and storyboard artist on Spongebob Squarepants during its first 10 years. And any Spongebob fan will tell you that those early years were the best years. Number 63. Seuss has admitted that he writes fan fiction about Stan. Number 64. Hirsch's first love was The Simpsons. So here we are, doing a second 107 Facts installment. No other show has a second 107 Facts installment? That's right. The Simpsons. Number 65. In the pilot, Grunkle Stan's invitation to have Dipper and Mabel choose any item from the gift shop exists solely as a trick for the audience to get to know the characters. Number 66. There's a cut extended fight scene from Double Dipper in which Dipper and Tyrone fight each other with toilet bowl cleaners and throw magazines at each other. Number 67. Dipper's mysterious novel series of choice is The Sibling Brothers. You can see him reading their novel, The Telltale Fable of the Unstable Table, before he goes to sleep. Number 68. In lieu of the twin E. ESP, Dipper and Mabel's allergies act up around the same time. Number 69. The voice actor for Olmec from Legends of the Hidden Temple voices Waddles the Pig. Number 70. Linda Cardellini, the voice of Wendy, hasn't only solved mysteries in the cartoon realm, she also played Velma in the live-action Scooby-Doo movie from 2002. Number 71. Tyler, the cute biker, is now mayor of Gravity Falls, purely because he's the only one who filled out the paperwork. Number 72. Stan's tourist attraction enemies are Granny Sweetkin's Yarn Ball, Upside Down Town, Log Land, Corn Maze, and Mystery Mountain. Number 73. Mystery Mountain is a parody of the Trees of Mystery, which is located within Redwood State Park in California. Like Mystery Mountain, the Trees of Mystery boast a museum and their very own gigantic Paul Bunyan statue. Number 74. Magic has to be in every episode. After the airing of the second episode, fans reacted very negatively to there being no sense of magic in the episode. Number 75. Early on in production, Hirsch was informed of another long mid-season hiatus separating the season into two parts. Because of this foresight, the writers decided to write and treat the two groups of episodes as their own seasons. This led to the idea of ending on a cliffhanger with the reveal of Grunkle Stan's brother. Number 76. To absolutely no one's surprise, Grenda is voiced by a man. But that man, Carl Farulo, is also a storyboard artist on shows such as Phineas Ferb and Sanjay and Craig. Number 77. Lazy Susan got her lazy eye during the very first tour Stan gave of the soon-to-be Mystery Shack. Number 78. Susan's voice is none other than Jennifer Coolidge. Number 79. The first character Alex Hirsch ever drew was Super Paper Bag Man. Hirsch was in the second grade, so he still had a ways to go. Number 80. Hirsch's main advice to aspiring writers and showrunners is to focus on the characters and to write what you know from your life experiences. Number 81. The temporal landscape of the show is intended to mirror summer camp. Childhood is finite, Hirsch says. That's why time moves forward and unfortunately the show can't have seeming endless Simpsons-like run. Number 82. When Hirsch pitched the show to Disney, the thing he said he was the most excited about was the opportunity to make fun of his sister for 20 episodes a year. Number 83. Gravity Falls is the Disney Channel's first animated 22-minute serialized comedy. Number 84. Legally, Disney is not allowed to include any references to real-life people, products, politics, or religions unless granted permission otherwise. An example of this was in the episode Headhunters. Larry Keane granted permission for the use of his likeness and name. Number 
85. Hirsch admits his sensibilities, quote, lean towards straight comedy and says he's used the magic realism and emotional sincerity present in Gravity Falls to round out the content. Number 86. Ford has 12 PhDs. Number 87. Granda has a boyfriend, Marius von Funshauser, an Austrian baron she met through the Northwest. Number 88. Marius' voice is provided by Matt Chapman because nothing says dashing baron like strong bad. Number 89. Since Summerween was built around the concept that the audience itself was going into the mystery shack and getting locked up by Grunkle Stan, the original idea for the tag was for the audience to turn out to be M. Night Shyamalan the entire time. But alas, M. Night Shyamalan would not let them use his name or likeness. Number 90. When Pacifica Northwest is arguing with her parents in the episode Golf War, Disney insisted that all characters wear seatbelts. Number 91. Hirsch really wants to do an episode where Grunkle Stan creates a cult and quote, mocks Scientology into the ground. Hirsch says that Stan is absolutely an L. Ron Hubbard type personality. Number 92. When questioned by fans about how he deals with censorship in children's cartoons, he compared the experience to a chimp constantly beating you with a wiffle ball bat. Number 93. Other than a few computer generated vehicles, Gravity Falls is entirely hand drawn, like in the days of yore. Number 94. One common device in Gravity Falls is to, quote, take relationships that should be fraught with annoyance and put a little love in there. For example, instead of the stereotypical situation of cops being hard on the rookie, Hirsch thought it would be funnier if the sheriff would be overjoyed every time his employee was inept and give him candy. Number 95. Famous Gravity Falls fans include R.L. Stein, Bruce Springsteen, and John Stewart. Number 96. The horrifying, sweaty, one-armed monstrosity is voiced by none other than comedian Louis C.K. Number 97. While Stan remains grunkle, Dipper and Mabel always go the extra mile and refer to Ford as Great Uncle. Number 98. Bill's hench maniacs are called 8-Ball, Cryptos, Teeth, Keyhole, Hectorgon, Amorphous, Veronica, Pacifier, the being whose name must never be said, otherwise known as Xanthar, and whatever those weird eyeball bats are called. Number 99. After the last episode, Weird Mageddon Part 1, it doesn't look like Gravity Falls exists anymore, so the show switched up the opening title sequence. The original sequence now collapses upon itself and we get the Weird Mageddon edition with Bill and his cronies supplementing the protagonist. Number 100. If you play the end of the credits in reverse, you'll hear Bill saying, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Number 101. Killing people isn't weird enough for Bill. Instead, he prefers cruel and unusual punishments, such as switching the orifices in your face, or like Ford, turning you into stone. Number 102. Discarded names for Weird Mageddon include Odd Pocalypse and Bizarre Mageddon. Weird Mageddon won because of its silly clumsiness. Number 103. The visuals of Weird Mageddon were, in Hirsch's words, everyone's imagination just uploading into this pocket of an episode. Number 104. Before beginning production on Gravity Falls, Alex was asked by Disney to help develop the show Fish Hooks. He even directed the pilot. Number 105. Hirsch is also known from the get-go that Bill would cause an apocalyptic scenario. Number 106. Alex Hirsch stated at New York Comic Con that he would be releasing a 288-page volume of the journals. He guaranteed many mysteries about the history of Gravity Falls and even some unsolved mysteries of Bill would indeed be revealed. And number 107. All right, it. Hirsch has always plotted out the beginning, middle, and end of the show. For instance, they've already solved the origin of the magic in the town. Good luck trying to get any writers to tell you, though. Thank <laughs> you.